Eelgrass meadows are important places because they are nurseries for small fish and other marine creatures, as well as protect our coastline from storms. They also help to purify the water of excess nutrients and remove carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. Come explore this special place and observe the many interesting animals and plants that live there. Here we are at Fort Foster at the scuba beach looking out at the Atlantic. We like to dive at high tide because the water is clearer and we'll see more marine life. We're all suited up, gear checked out, and ready to enter the water. The sand here is very soft, making our footing difficult with all our heavy gear. In the distance, you see a red flag with a diagonal stripe indicating a diver below. All boats should stay at least 150 feet away. We're now beginning our descent. The rocky bottom comes into view. As we swim out into deeper water, we encounter beds of eelgrass. Among the eelgrass are patches and avenues of colorful rocks, shells, and marine algae. Eelgrass provides protection for tiny creatures. Watch closely. Can you see the baby shrimp here? Eelgrass requires good sunlight to thrive and produces a canopy of blades to protect small fish, crustaceans, and other marine life from large predators. Here we see a variety of colorful seaweed called macroalgae that bend and flex with the passing waves overhead. This flexibility enables the algae to withstand storms, unlike the branches of trees which break in the wind. Eelgrass grows closely together and with its extensive root system helps protect our coast against storm damage. It also takes up nutrients through its blades and roots, helping to purify the water. We find a Jonah crab secure in the eelgrass. Jonah crabs are harvested for the meat in their claws and are caught in lobster traps. We encounter a small rock crab climbing on a blade of eelgrass. Larger crabs can't reach the little guy up there. He is probably feeding on the small snails on the blades. Snails are one of the favorite foods of crabs, but they will eat almost anything. Soon we come upon a small lobster who has constructed a den within the eelgrass. Here he is protected from predators and will not be bothered by larger lobsters. We swim a little further and come across a common resident of the eelgrass meadow, a winter flounder. Flounder can change color and pattern, camouflaging themselves against predators. They also use their camouflage to catch prey themselves. They are ambush predators and often lie in wait near the edge of the eelgrass to eat unsuspecting shrimp, small crabs, and worms, their favorite foods. We come across an interesting cluster of squid eggs, each finger containing about 200 eggs. Squid are favorite foods of fast predatory fish like stripers and bluefish. We are now about 75 yards offshore where a sandy plain begins, but there is still much to see. Large lobsters are common here. Lobsters are curious by nature and, if you wait, they will usually come to inspect you, and sometimes will challenge you to leave their territory. Their large, powerful crusher claw is a formidable weapon. For some reason, I spook the lobster, and with a flip of its powerful tail, it escapes backwards. We come across an area littered with hermit crabs, doing their hermit crab thing. See the flounder? You can only see it clearly when it moves. It has near-perfect camouflage. This is also a winter flounder, but it has adopted a different color pattern than we saw previously. We're lucky to get up close to a hermit crab feeding. They can be pretty bold little guys, 
and only retreat into their shell homes when threatened. Notice how it stirs up the sand with its large pincher claw and sifts through the debris for morsels of food. Further out in the sand, we find a large rock crab. When threatened, they will often burrow in the sand, but this one decides to move off. Well, it's time to begin terminating the dive and heading back towards shore. We decide to travel along one of the rocky outcrops and discover a long crevice, a canyon of sorts, and begin swimming through it. Along the way, we see lots of marine growth that we plan to explore on our next dive. As we emerge from the small canyon, we encounter large boulders here and there and a carpet of iris moss and many other macroalgae. We swim further along in a northwest direction using our compass as a guide. A compass is an important piece of dive equipment because it is easy to lose your sense of direction underwater. As we approach shore, the macroalgae gives way to the rocky beach and we spot our dive flag and slowly head towards the surface. For links to my other educational videos, go to seps.unh.edu slash person slash n dash Dennis dash Chastine. Thank you.